Maybe staying home was the best thing. Or maybe because they pick you up, you go to the movies, you come across somebody and you meet the person who eventually becomes the absolute love of your life. You would have gotten married together, you would have had children, you had all of the things in life that you could possibly have dreamed of. Maybe that would have happened. But you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. You know, could, it, you know could, things have been, could things have turned out better? Could they have turned out worse? Yes, the answer is yes to both of those. But what you did do though, what you did do though, is you were free and you've made a choice to stay home. So even if you look at people having a good time and say, man, I wish I was doing that, at least you can look at your life, hopefully you can look at your life and say, but you know what, I made this choice. This is the life I chose. This is the thing I decided to do. And that's where freedom is. That's where, that, that's where, that's where the joy is in life, to be free. The only thing really left now is to maybe follow what the man says and love yours. And to love the life that you choose because you chose it. Not because it was the best possible imaginary outcome. I'll say that again. Not because it's the best possible imaginary outcome, but because it's the one that you chose. And that's part of the problem with some of the commitments that we make. Sometimes you make a commitment to something that can be so deep that it actually robs you of your free will. Something like that, you know, military contract you can get out of, but it does, it's gonna cost you something as you do it. Um, what we started talking about last period was this idea of, of drugs being like that, that you can do them to a point that you now lose your free will. Like if any of you guys, I'm sure some of you have family members or friends or something who struggle with alcoholism or drugs and the closer it is to us, the more it, it, it hurts, of course. And that question has probably passed through our heads sometime. How come they don't just stop? Why won't you just do this? How come you can't choose me over the alcohol? And that's a heck of a question to ask yourself. Why can't they? Because they can't. Because you can do these things to a point where you now lose your free will. You no longer have the ability to not, to not do them. You become addicted. And it's never as simple as just, hey, why don't you just do this? You know, some of us in this room right now would ask you, how come you don't just stop lying? How come you don't just stop saying things that aren't true? And there's no chemical dependency. And you can, if you really stop and realize how many times in a day you might say stuff that isn't true. Now imagine if you had like an actual neurological chemical addiction to that, how hard it would be to, to stop doing those things that, that you know were harmful. It's hard, man. It's hard. And so then the question becomes, you actually, you actually have freedom when you do those things. You had the freedom to start. You had the choice to start using, using, doing those things. You had the choice to become a, a, a judge, knowing that you might have to, to do that kind of stuff. You know, ruling against, you know, ruling when, when you know something's not true. But when you, you know, we, we don't really think of it until it comes down to it. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know. What else? Yeah. And we tend to think of freedom as this thing of like, I want to be free and I want to have like, like no commitments. If you have no commitments, he's saying, well, you're not really free. But freedom is actually the ability to choose. It isn't, the, it isn't having no, no, no responsibilities. It's being able to choose which responsibilities. Um, stop me if you've heard this before, but, but life is suffering. You don't get to choose not to suffer. There's no part of your life that, that, that allows that to happen. But you can choose what you're going to suffer for. <clears throat> some, some of us absolutely just, just, you know, I don't know, maybe we hate school. We just hate being here. And then, you know, why? Oh, because, you know, we don't, I don't get to do whatever I want to do. Okay. Would you like to be able to do whatever you want to do? I'd like to rewind that clock 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Was I standing above you telling you, hey guys, get these things done, quiet down, do this work. So you had freedom. Now I'm going to ask you, what did you do with it? Did you get the work that was it? Yeah, I wrote down the quote. Maybe I got a sentence into it. Yeah, yeah talk to me. Horrible waste of time. But, but think about what it is that you would that, that you do when you have freedom. 
Like in this class, you guys are gonna find, I, I mentioned it when we looked at the syllabus, the hardest part of this class students tell me is that I don't stand above you and say, hey, get your work done. I have a due date of December 1st, which means, oh my God, it's, so I can wait until December to turn everything in. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have to do anything right now, as long as you're not, as long as you're not putting your head down, as long as you're not a distraction to me, as long as you're not being obnoxious, sure, sure. Oh man, now my question is, what are you going to do with that? It's the hardest part. These people always think, oh, I can do this tomorrow. Oh, you know, oh my, my government homework is due today. And so I, I'm, I'm gonna use this time right now to turn this in. Why didn't you do it yesterday? What did you choose to do otherwise? What are you doing otherwise? And it's a real question. It isn't a chastise, like you should be doing this, you should be doing that. I don't know what's best for you. The tragedy also, by the way, is that you probably don't know what's best for you either. Because how can you possibly know? In order for you to know what's best for you, you have to know how things are going to turn out, if that's your measurement of what's good for you. Like for example, if, um, like maybe your example I used last period, let's say that your, your friends invite you to a movie and you're like, oh, I don't wanna go, so you're tired or whatever, so you choose not to go. And then later on you see your friends posting on their story about all the fun they're having at the movie. And you're like, man, I should have gone. Is that the best thing for you? Yeah, okay, can't have, but you can't know. Maybe because you decide to go to the movies with your friends, they have to drive from where they were to come pick you up and then drive from there to the theater. But because they came and picked you up, they're on that route back to the theater, you get T-boned by a, by, a, by a pickup truck and everyone would have been killed in the car accident. Yeah. So maybe staying home was the best thing. Or maybe because they pick you up, you go to the movies, you come across somebody and you meet the person who eventually becomes the absolute love of your life. You would have gotten married together, you would have had children, you had all of the things in life that you could possibly have dreamed of. Maybe that would have happened. But you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. You know, could, it, you know could, things have been, could things have turned out better? Could they have turned out worse? Yes, the answer is yes to both of those. But what you did do though, what you did do though, is you were free and you made a choice to stay home. So even if you look at people having a good time and say, man, I wish I was doing that, at least you can look at your life, hopefully you can look at your life and say, but you know what, I made this choice. This is the life I chose. This is the thing I decided to do. And that's where freedom is. That's where, that, that's where, that's where the joy is in life, to be free. And some of you guys, and by, sorry, I shouldn't say it that way, but I hope you know what I mean when I say that. I'm talking about just like students generally especially seniors will sit here and just be like, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. I can't, I can't wait to get out of here. You know, it's, oh, is, he, oh, is he still talking, suffering and responsible? What the hell is he talking about even? And yet some of the same people who will be thinking about that are stressing right now because you're applying to a university and you're gonna go off willingly and happily to pay $30,000 a year next year to get the exact same thing that you're getting for free right now. Oh, I hate school. God, I hope I get into that school. <laughs> You know, why? Because it's different. How is it different? How could you possibly know it's different? You haven't been there. You don't know what you don't know. Well, because I have friends who have done that. Yeah, and you probably had friends who went through high school and, had, and, and learned lots also. Which one are you going to be? Well, it's going to be the choice that you make. Which one are you going to get something out of? Well, because with that one, I can get a job. Okay. <laughs> can you? What are you going to study? Is, that, is there going to be a, is there going to be a job opportunity for you when you finish with that? Or you can get something worthwhile. You can get that dream job. And at that dream job, meet the love of your life. Or are you gonna be killed in a car accident on the way to, to school? I don't know. Neither do you. And that's one of those tragedies of life, but also one of those exciting things of life, because we don't know. So the, so the only thing really left now is to maybe follow what the man says and love yours. You, know, you have to love the life that you choose because you chose it. Not because it was the best possible imaginary outcome. I'll say that again. Not because it's the best possible imaginary outcome, but because it's the one that you chose. And in that is freedom. Life is suffering. You don't get to choose not to suffer. You don't have freedom there. But you can choose what you're going to suffer for. And hopefully in that, find something that's, that, that is... That, that makes the suffering worthwhile. It helps you to transcend the suffering. 
and then you can find that thing and then do that a lot, to do that a lot, and then hopefully thereby reduce some of the tragedy of life, the difficulties, and hopefully in that become useful to the people around you who are struggling with that. Because there's probably nothing else in life that's worth doing more than that. Getting on the side of reality, helping the people around you, lifting each other up, carrying one another's burdens. So it isn't having no commitments. It's choosing which commitments you're going to pursue. That's probably why we hate high school so much. We don't get to choose. That's probably why we're willing to pay so much money next year for the same thing you're getting this year for free because at least you're choosing to do it that way. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't take from what I'm saying that there's a judgment there. It's just a narration. And so find something worthwhile. Hopefully the school you choose is worth the, the tuition. Hopefully the, the job that you choose is worth all the suffering it took you to get through school or to get through experience or to get however you got it. Hopefully that makes it all worthwhile. And then in that, maybe you can't say what was best for you, but the one thing maybe you know that was best for you was that you had the freedom to be you, to choose you, to make those commitments for yourself, and then follow through on it. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy Thursday. <laughs>